Hey everybody, I am back and this time this video is going to be completely different. It will not be a fashion review <laughs> of like red carpet looks or anything like that. I am basically focusing on something that I seen while I was out shopping a while back. Now I was shopping at TJ Maxx and I found some of Doja Cat's makeup from her collaboration with BH Cosmetics. So while that was great for my pockets and all, you know, even though her products were actually not overpriced with BH Cosmetics, it made me wonder why was I able to find them at TJ Maxx so quickly. So I decided to dig a little bit, do some research, and pretty much come up with that conclusion for that. So for starters, I did go to BH Cosmetics website and basically typed in for Doja as well as Iggy because they did collaborate with her as well. Both pages basically said that there are no products for those collections. Now, I get that this is a limited collection and once something is out, it's out. You know, it's not going to come back unless they do more um, collabs for newer products. If you say that they are sold out on your, <laughs> on your social sites, but I go to your page and it's saying it's not there, but I'm able to find it at TJ Maxx, then I'm going to reveal why that is actually a problem. For starters... I love shopping at stores like TJ Maxx. I'm able to get everything that I like at a discount compared to other retail stores. So that is actually a plus for me, but it becomes a problem for the business. Most of the inventory that is at TJ Maxx are basically from department stores that had cancellations, manufacturers who make too much of a product, as well as closeout deals that are basically from the end of the year or at the end of a season. Now, this is what made me go down a rabbit hole and research what is going on. As we know that BH Cosmetics makes their own products. So this is probably because the production and while they may have been able to sell the products, did they overproduce? Or were they just not able to sell the products? I mean, that is possible, especially when you look at they are going through currently their second acquisition in 2022 and they did file for bankruptcy. This kind of made me go into that rabbit hole, do the research, see what's going on. So we're going to talk about how successful was their collapse? Did it make a difference in turning the brand around? We're going to pretty much talk about their rise. So I went to their website just so that I can tell you who they are based off of what they have stated instead of giving who I assume they are. So when you go to their page and you go to our story where they basically state it's about us and then they go they have our story. So you'll basically click on that and they'll give you the rundown of who they are and what they're about. So when you go down, you can see that they were established in Los Angeles and they bring the best in cruelty-free cosmetics that always break convention. So they're basically pushing their narrative and letting you know that they're going to break the trends. They're going to be different. So they also state that they believe that makeup shouldn't be that complicated. So you should experiment, enjoy, and be kind to your wallet and plan it while doing it, which I think is actually a good statement. If I can actually put my little, you know, two cents in <laughs> because no one wants to buy overly priced products. I mean, we will if the products are really good, but if it's cheaper, that's a plus. So it allows you to get more for your buck. And then the fact that they're talking about saving the planet as well, that's a plus because that's something that is very popular right now when you're trying to innovate and do things differently. And they state that their products are colorful and fun with no shortcuts. So they are genuine, raw, and stand fiercely for our core values. Show off your unique self and make impact and stand out from the crowd one look at a time. So they're promoting individuality, something that I feel like is very important, especially because nowadays, everyone is starting to look like <laughs> so they're promoting that so then as you scroll down they talk about how bh cares um their products are cruelty free vegan extra clean and more sustainable every day then when you go down further they say that they stand for diversity inclusion 
female empowerment, sustainability, and civic engagement. Um, I feel like that is true because when I go to their social sites, it is clear that they focus on inclusivity as they showcase multiple posts of their customers and influencers and as they do tutorials, photos, and showcase their video to over 3.7 million followers on Instagram, 286,000 on Twitter, 45,000 on Pinterest, and 1.8 million on Facebook. So of course they are in the beauty business and their products can be bought on their website, as you can see, as well as Ultra and Beauty Bay. When you go down further, they talk about um, their purpose, how normal is boring, and then life was made to be colorful, which kind of goes with their packaging and the products that they sell. You can definitely see that within their eyeshadows and lipsticks and so forth. And then they also state that together, let's break down walls and then have fun doing it. Nothing can stop them and just show yourself that you're real important. When you go down further, you're able to see the CEO. He gives his statement. Then there's the general manager, the deputy CMO. Then you have your senior director, supply chain of operations manager, and D2C assistant marketing manager. They also have their product development operations assistants, as well as their customer service and social media rep. I feel like that is great to have on their website because now we can put a face to the name, which kind of makes the brand seem more personable as well, because I'm pretty sure there are brands out there where you're not sure who owns it and who's behind a lot of the different things. Now, BH Cosmetics was established in 2009 by three important figures. There's Fred Sadovsky, he is the CEO. Kirill Trachtenberg, he is the Chief Strategy Officer. And Robert Sephardi, he is the COO. So Business Wire states how during the first acquisition with Mid-Ocean Partners, they are basically a middle market private equity firm focused on consumer and business services. So for those of you who don't know what a private equity firm is, they basically basically mid oceans job is to invest and provide financial support for BH Cosmetics. So the co-founder and CEO Fred commented and he basically stated that they are very excited to begin their partnership with Mid-Ocean. And Mid-Ocean has tremendous resources and experiences building brands and consumer products on different platforms and have a proven track record of helping, of helping take founder-led consumer businesses to the next level. And he basically states that they are confident that Mid-Ocean will be an excellent partner for BH Cosmetics as they look to continue BH's expansion in the color cosmetic market. Robert can also be found stating that Mid-Ocean's experience in building lead consumer brands and deep understanding of, of the industry makes them ideal to partner with. And he basically states that they have successfully accelerated BH's growth in recent years by expanding in wholesale and international market. With Mid-Ocean's partnership and guidance, BH will have the resources, industry knowledge, and expertise to help take their company to the next level. Now, it states that after the first acquisition in 2018, all three of the original founders will retain significant ownership, you know, have a good stake within the company. Now, keep in mind that they are a private company, so um, finding information and all that is very different. So I went to their website and I'll show you this again. It is very clear that they have a new CEO named Giannis Rodokanachi. So where are the original founders? So I did some digging and went to LinkedIn and I was able to find that Fred and it looks like, you know, based off of what he stated, we see that, of course, he was the CEO and co-founder since 2009, as well as he became the board member in January 2020 until December 2020. And then we see that he is also a co-founder of DTC Labs LLC since December 2020. So it looks like he may not be a CEO for BH Cosmetics anymore, as it does have an end date on there. DTC Labs. While BH Cosmetics uses DTC, you know, the direct to consumer, um, it's unclear as if they are actually a part of DTC Labs. 
I tried to pull that up. I could not find that information. It is a little different when it's a private company. Unless they give you that information, rarely will you know. It's more available for if they were public. And because he's a co-founder of DTC Labs, I was able to pull them up as well. And it's easy to find that he is still working with Kirill. And it also states that Kirill is actually still a part of BH Cosmetics. Um, it did not state that he had an end date on his information. So it still shows that he is still COO and co-founder of BH Cosmetics. Now, I couldn't find much about Robert, but if this is the same Robert um, that I was able to find for Kukla Capital Group Incorporated, then this is his other information. So it basically stated that he started something in January of 2020. Fred, along with his partnership, started his in February of 2020. So they both have outside businesses from BH Cosmetics. I am unsure as to why Fred may have left, but it is clear that this was way before the Chapter 11 bankruptcy on January 14th, 2020. But we will revisit that information later. Before 2018, it is very clear that BH Cosmetics had major success up until about a year before their acquisition. They focused on fun and artistic products and limited collections. Something that's still found on their website when you see their um, holiday specials and different things of those sorts. As far as the financials, it's a little harder, as I stated earlier, to see most of the financials as they are private. So a major portion of that information is not made public other than the basics, which is, you know, the basics that we're allowed to see are based off of what they have said. So when you go to e-commerce DB, I was able to find that when it pertains to net sales, it began to drop in 2017 which also aligns with the year over year growth which also shows a decline and ShareCast shared how in 2019 BH Cosmetics delivered a net revenue of 55.8 million dollars. BH Cosmetics can also be seen stating that how due to COVID-19 which significantly impacted their business their revenue decreased to 33.7 million dollars in 2020. 20, generating about a loss of $22.5 million. And they basically said this could also be caused by high operation costs. We will revisit that portion of high operation costs at a later portion in this video. It was also revealed that in 2019, BH Cosmetics brought in a new management team to try and turn things around. BH Cosmetics made changes by basically neglecting their idea to push a skincare line and they decided to collab with two major celebrities Iggy Azalea and Doja Cat. Iggy can be seen stating how she never really let go of that 2000s era and it was very clear when it comes to her style and her music videos. Billboard also stated how Iggy is so nostalgic for brat dolls, glitter, and everything early 2000s that she channeled that obsession in a new BH Cosmetics collaboration. While we can see that she named her limited collaboration totally plastic, I believe that going for that Y2K style was smart as we currently see the resurgence of this in pop culture. So you kind of can say she was ahead of her time a little bit for doing that when it comes to the makeup. Iggy and Giannis also stated that she was very hands-on in this project. So that is also a plus because many people want to feel like you're getting um, something that's very personable when it comes to an artist or someone that you want to buy from. The Totally Plastic line dropped on August 29th, 2021, and Iggy stated that there may be more to come if they chose to extend their collaboration. I personally haven't bought or tried any of the products, but based on the reviews, some liked it, some didn't. So it was basically mixed. And I'm going to pretty much show you guys what some of the people have said.
eyeshadow palettes. There's a purple palette. There's a pink palette, which unfortunately one of the shades arrived broken. I think it was the most beautiful shade in the palette. So as you can see, it's mixed review. Some people love it. They just say you have to pack on so much in order to get the best out of your product. Doja mentioned that she bought her first eyeshadow palette from BH Cosmetics and the collab actually made sense. It also revealed that the makeup collab matches the theme of her planet, her era, which to me was very clear based off the colors and the schemes that you were able to see. To me, this made sense because we watch Doja do makeup online. She posts pictures of her doing makeup and everything else. The products dropped in September 25th, 2021 online and on October 3rd, 2021 in stores. I have the product, so I can say that I like the eyeliner, the gold mini eyeshadow palette, and the deep berry liquid lip powder. They actually lasted all day. The only eyeliner that I did not like was the white eyeliner. I bought it trying to do something different, and honestly, it barely showed up on my skin tone. Then there's the gloss. I did use the gloss. It said it's supposed to um, plump your lips. To me, it didn't plump the lips. I feel like I have a lip gloss that definitely does that. It did not do that, so it kind of left more to be desired. And then as far as the other products within that collection, I can't speak on because I do have some of them. I just haven't tested it out yet. So if you want to, you can check out other reviews. They have them on YouTube so that you can know what the products are and you can actually see how the products work for both collaborations. Next, we'd have to ask ourselves, did the collaborations actually help? So it seems like the collaborations were somewhat of a success. Some people liked it, some people didn't. But earlier I stated that I found Doja's products at TJ Maxx just months after the release, which is rare. That normally happens, you know, towards the end of a season or something else, which basically isn't a good sign. So it shows that there was either overproduction for the collaborations or just not enough sales. Either way, they weren't able to sell what they thought they would, which goes back to what I stated earlier, high operation costs. This basically means there's less profits and more expenses. So I was able to find that the chief restructuring officer, Spencer Ware, stated that the company struggled to obtain profitability after pursuing an ultimately unsuccessful launch of various products lines. So I believe that they are talking about doja and iggy's collaboration so according to the filings bh cosmetics is 23.5 million dollars in debt and they owe a further 15 million dollars in unpaid rent and other expenses so that's definitely not good so it's safe to say that the collabs weren't a success it barely made a difference and proves why I was able to get the products at a retailer such as TJ Maxx so quickly. So it was revealed at the beginning of the year that BH Cosmetics filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on January 14th, 2020. So Chapter 11 is basically when a company or um, a business runs into financial troubles but want to basically stay open so instead of filing chapter 7 bankruptcy where you have to liquidate everything they'll file chapter 11 which allows them to kind of get back on their feet and gives them a little bit of protection in a way to where they'll they'll basically get protection from creditors and it allows them to just hop on to a new path fix things up fix their assets, get their debts, pay them off, and so forth. It was also revealed in beauty packaging that they plan to actually sell 
all this intellectual property for four point three million dollars. So that full um, twenty three point five million that they had in debt. million of that was due to term loans and 13.9 million of that was from revolved loans. And then it also states that when they talk about the 15 million dollars, when they talk about the 15 million dollars in unpaid rent and other expenses, that can also include that 1 million in other creditors as well. So basically, what could BH Cosmetics have done differently? First and foremost, I would say that they should have paid attention to the market. So in between 2013 to 2016, we began to see like a renaissance of sort when it comes to beauty, when it comes to beauty. Celebrities were creating their own brands instead of doing collabs. So we seen celebrities such as the Kardashians and Rihanna and others who created their own. And we're even seeing celebrities go into their own makeup brands. Currently, I mean, there's Victoria Beckham, Halsey, Selena Gomez, Scarlett Johansson, J-Lo. Even Millie Bobby Brown is coming up with her own as well. So they're all basically creating their own brands that feels as if it's more personable. What I was talking about earlier, you want to feel like I'm buying something that this individual actually uses, which may be why BH Cosmetics went through their first acquisition in the first place. I can only assume that based off of the information I was able to find. And I think they were trying to go for newer ideas to keep up with the current changes. While both Iggy and Doja are said to be hands on during the collapse, some consumers argue in the comments that Doja isn't really hands on with the She isn't really hands on with the other items that came out later during that year. From my understanding, there is the kittens room that pretty much updates and gives you all the information. And they had commented and basically stated that Doja had nothing to do with it, which is why you don't see her post about it as much anymore. So all this did was fuel the argument, pushing the narrative and the idea that people may be milking her name for sales which also isn't a good sign. I also dug into both Doja and Iggy's Instagram, and I haven't seen either of them post about their collabs since they actually first happened. And when I watch Doja's lives of her doing makeup or her post pictures, I don't really see her using the makeup that she has with BH Cosmetics. Also, Doja tags. A lot of times she tags who does her makeup, the brands and so forth. I did not see any of the brands written in there, as well as when I go to those makeup artist site and when they post a picture of them doing her makeup, I don't see any of them use that they are using her BH Cosmetics um, products. Same thing with Iggy, which is different because we see Rihanna use her brands and she'll post about it. She'll tag them the same thing with the Kardashians and many others. I also feel like something that they could have done differently is pushed for that skincare line as there's definitely a market for that right now i mean rihanna has her skincare line j-lo selena gomez gabrielle union there's so many more different celebrities and influencers even influencers that are on youtube they're creating their own skincare line so i feel like they kind of missed the mark but it's kind of easy for them to get back into it and actually push that out so instead of doing more collabs Do your own thing. They're currently going through their second acquisition with Revolution Beauty, who basically brought them below their asking price. They asked for four point to be um, bought at four point three million, but it was actually sold at three point nine million between the end of May, early June. So Revolution So Revolution Beauty states that it plans to re-energize the BH cosmetic brand with new products and use both Revolution Beauty and BH's relationships in the U.S., U.K., and internationally with hopes that the loyal fan base will support them as they move forward. Now, based off of social media, I do see that they still post about their Iggy collab. Um, That post was made on May 28th. So that's right around the time that they did their second acquisition. But only time will tell how it will truly pan out and what new products are in the works. Um, Do I think that they can come back from it? 
most definitely i feel like any brand can come back from different things if they make the right adjustments hopefully you all enjoyed this video i was able to talk about their success in the beginning um who owns it and so forth what is actually going on with them I was able to talk about whether those collabs were successful and it, we pretty much determined that they really were not successful. It really didn't make a difference. It did not. They should have went with the skincare line instead of the collabs. And then um, did those collabs really make a difference in turning the brand around? It's clear that it actually did not make a difference in turning the business around because they ended up filing for bankruptcy. We talked about what they could have done differently and then... I, as far as the next stages, we truly don't know. Only time will tell. So thank you all for watching. And let me know if you actually like this. I can do more research and talk about other businesses and so forth. Um, just let me know what you guys like or what you don't like. And I'll see you next time.